happy little games. When it comes to classic retro shooters from the 1980s, in my opinion, the cream of the crop is Galaga, which I've recently done a history of on this very channel. Once Space Invaders and then Galaxian got the ball rolling, the floodgates opened up and more and more shooters were released. The typical scenario involved you being in, surprise, surprise, outer space and piloting a spaceship taking out the various alien aircraft. Today, the vertical shooter that we are going to take a look at involves you defending the planet Earth against the massive attack of the Xevious Army. Which brings us to the name of the game, which is Xevious, and it was released by Namco in 1982. Thanks to the fantastic graphics and playability, this became a bona fide worldwide success. Where did some of the inspiration for the enemy ships come from? What was the original name and scenario of this game? Let's find out as we learn about the history of Xevious. In 1982, the golden age of arcades were running wild and thanks to the aforementioned shooters, another game was unleashed upon the public which was one of the first side-scrolling shooters by the name of Scramble. This was a massive success for manufacturer Konami, selling just over 15,000 arcade cabinets not to mention all the various home ports. Arcade manufacturer Namco were on quite the roll when it came to releasing arcade games that would stand the test of time for the next 40 years. Just take the years of 1980 through 1982 for example. They had released Pac-Man, Rally X, Galaga, Dig Dug, and Pole Position, all in that short window. Having recognized the success of Scramble, the marketing department at Namco wanted a two-button shooter, so they ordered their team, which included new employee Masunabu Endo. Mr. Endo had been in charge of designing the sprites for the game, which at the time was looking very different than the classic Xevious we all know and love today. The original scenario revolved around the Vietnam War. So instead of a spaceship, you took control of a helicopter shooting other aircraft and dropping bombs. The game was known as Cheyenne, which could be a reference to the Cheyenne attack helicopter used in the Vietnam War. This could not be confirmed, as even Mr. Endo has forgotten where the name came from. Halfway through development, there was a personnel reshuffling and the senior programmer and design planner both quit, leaving Mr. Endo as the head designer even though he didn't know a thing about programming. Luckily, he was a quick study and decided to do a little on-the-job training becoming the head designer, artist, and programmer. According to Mr. Endo, what I wanted to try and do with Xevious was, for the first time, to give a video game a consistent world and setting. Also, within the limitations of the existing hardware, I wanted to create high quality sprites. Finally, I wanted a story that wouldn't just be some tacked on extra, but could actually stand on its own merits. He was joined by Namco robotics designer Shigeki Toyama, who would help design the various ships. One thing that Mr. Endo wanted to make his game stand out from other arcade games was a cohesive story to pull the player in. The story, as I'll get to it later, revolves around an ancient civilization who has left Earth and has come back to wage war. The designers decided to create their own language going so far as to name each enemy with made up words. The original spelling of the game was Xevious with a Z, but they wanted to make the game sound more exotic so they replaced it with an X. 
Since a lot of the backgrounds were already designed, they decided to keep the Earth setting and not move it to outer space. Mr. Endo was influenced by ray tracing and wanted to give the game sprites a high quality polish. He did this by using different shades of gray and it turned out great. The designs of certain aircraft in the game were, shall we say, inspired by popular works of science fiction at the time. The ship that you pilot is known as the Sovalu and was inspired by the Nostromo ship from the 1979 film Alien. The Terrazzi was based on the Cylon Raider from Battlestar Galactica. The Cappy was based on the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. And the Bakura was based on the monolith from 2001 A Space Odyssey. The team wanted to create a scrolling two-button game with one long playfield that was actually split into 16 seamless segments. This was one of the earliest games to feature a boss fight with a massive ship, the Andor Genesis. During the game's development, the massive ship was nicknamed Gofuru due to resembling the cookies of the same name. They had to change it into an octagon instead as the hardware had difficulty displaying round objects. Something else that is a first for the genre is that enemies do not sit passively in a formation or dive recklessly at your ship. Instead, they get as close as possible to you, take a shot, and retreat to the top or the sides of the screen. It also used a primitive form of AI that adapted to how well the player was doing. If you are clearing enemies rather quickly, the game would ramp up the challenge by throwing a different type of enemy at you. If you played aggressively, the game would respond more aggressively as well. They knew if they could get everything dialed in just right from the speed of the scrolling to the difficulty, they would have a hit on their hands. This was one of the first arcade games to receive a promotional video and a commercial. Xevious, with an X, was released by Namco in late 1982. The game was distributed by Atari here in the States. As the very detailed story goes, Many thousands of years ago, there was a technologically advanced civilization that lived here on Earth. The Xevious. Their powerful computers made a terrible prediction. An ice age was about to descend that would be so extreme that human life could not survive. And so the entire population left the Earth in their spacecraft to seek a new home in deep space. But now, the Xevious have come back to reclaim the planet in a totally compelling video game experience from Atari where players search the remote corners of the Earth to find and destroy the invaders. The game is a one or two player affair in which you take control of the Sovalu, blasting any and everything that moves. Using either your zapper, which is a double shot gun that destroys nearly every enemy in one shot, or you can use the bomb button in which you drop loads of artillery destroying everything in your path. This is a 16 stage affair in which you have to traverse around the various scenic landscapes taking in all the sights and sounds while you annihilate everything you can. Speaking of the backgrounds, this was the first vertical scrolling shooter to feature them that weren't just simple star fields. You will encounter rivers, forests, and the famous Peruvian Nazca lines. Speaking of the 16 stages, they are all strung together making it appear as one continuous stage. The only way to tell the start of a new stage is a thick forest before each one. Back in 1982, the first thing you noticed when seeing this game running for the first time were the fantastic visuals and silky smooth scrolling. Up until this point, nothing had been done quite like it. Not only did we get a multitude of 26 different detailed enemy ships, but the backgrounds themselves also had a nice polish to them. There are two types of enemies in the game and those are the ground and air. 
As I mentioned, your blaster can drop bombs on the guide target with the aid of a lock-on feature. The bombs can also uncover secrets including the Sol Citadels who were enemies hidden underground. It's also possible to collect special flags from Namco's other arcade game, Rally X. These can be collected for points or extra lives depending on the dip switch settings. Another nice little easter egg is the inclusion of Mr. Endo's name appearing in the game. At the time, it was a big no-no for developers to get credited for their work as rival companies could locate them and poach them. This was one of the issues of the four programmers who left Atari to form Activision becoming the first third-party developer. Mr. Endo's name appears as Eviso and it's pretty easy to uncover. Your other weapon of choice is your laser cannon that fires two shots in front of the ship. The enemy attack patterns are also a bit more complex as instead of trying to fly right through you, they will actually evade the player and retreat after shooting. Thanks to a little bit of AI, the game will become progressively more difficult and adapt to the skill level of the player. If you are doing good at destroying a certain enemy type, a more advanced enemy will replace it. If you are able to locate and destroy the red flashing Zolbak radars on the ground, it will cause the game to switch back to easier enemies. It's not just killing a certain type of enemy that will up the difficulty, but also the more your score increases making the waves of enemies become even more deadly. Every fourth stage or so, you will encounter the massive flying fortress and or genesis. This was considered one of the first boss enemies to ever appear in video games. It will open the floodgates and send a barrage of bullets and bombs to take you out. You can either be a coward and hang back waiting for it to retreat, or you can sack up and attempt to take it down yourself. You can drop bombs in the core right in the center or the four blaster points. After the 16th stage, the game will loop only at a higher difficulty. While the game was a decent sized hit here in the States, and I for one always loved this game, it was a massive phenomenon in Japan similar in scope to Space Invaders. The game spawned a ton of merchandise in the Land of the Rising Sun including model kits, t-shirts, novels, keychains, a wristwatch, a redemption game that doesn't give out tickets but little medals instead, a Xevious Pachinko game. And for all you men who were having trouble rising to the occasion, there was even a licensing agreement with Viagra for the product known as Ziagra. The game was so popular in Japan, the characters were featured in the film Kamen Rider X Super Sentai Cho Super Hero Tizen. <laughs> Xevious the anime was set to be released in 2002 in Japan. The movie was fully completed and was all set to go for a September 2002 release, but it never came out. To promote it, they went on a roadshow to show it off to the public in the spring and summer of 2002. Early reviews for it were not good, citing poor CGI and a lackluster story. 
over the years, the soundtrack to the game has also been released numerous times in Japan. Due to the enormous popularity of the original, Namco wasted no time releasing a follow-up entitled Super Xevious in 1984. Namco took the old, if it's not broke, don't fix it adage and gave us basically an updated version of Xevious. Arcade operators at the time were getting a bit frustrated with players who could come in and play the game for long periods of time on one quarter, thus lowering their revenue. The core gameplay pretty much stays the same, although they did add six new enemy types and ramps up the difficulty quite a bit. The enemies are more aggressive and they use faster moving projectiles. The enemy types are more human based including tanks, helicopters, jets, but there are even silver plated flagships from Namco's other arcade game Galaxian. Certain enemy types have to be captured for points instead of shooting them. If you attack them, it actually resets the score to zero. I might as well go ahead and mention the spin-off that was released in 1984 by the name of Grobda. This was also designed by Mr. Endo from start to finish in just under three months and it features you taking control of the enemy ship Grobda in this multi-directional single screen shooter. The goal of the game is to use your laser and destroy all the enemies on each screen while dodging their projectiles as quickly as possible. There are 99 levels in total with each one becoming more difficult. <laughs> Get ready. Get ready. In 1986, Mr. Endo left Namco to form his own company after opposing the idea of a sequel to Xevious as he felt it was unnecessary. After his departure, they released Super Xevious Gamp No Natso for the Famicom. This translates roughly to Mystery of the Gamp, which is a clue as to what the game involves. This is a vertical scrolling shooter similar to the original, but there is one difference. Each level has a puzzle that must be solved in order to progress. If you fail to solve these riddles, the stage will loop indefinitely, getting harder and harder in the process. Some of the things you have to do are bomb all the required targets or find hidden spots on the map. The game also introduced a few power-ups as well. There was a lot of hoopla over in Japan when this game came out, but it was not well received, so it was never released outside of Japan. In 1988, Xevious Far Draw Saga was released for the MSX2. In this game, players can choose between two modes, either the Recon, which is a port of the original, or Scramble, which is a new mode for the game which includes 16 areas spread over 4 stages, new enemies, new boss battles, and of course the Andor Genesis. There are also four different ships including the Solvalu that you get to pilot. In the scramble mode, you pilot a different ship on each of the four stages. A boss battle also takes place at the end of each stage. There is also dialogue in between the levels to flesh out the story. In 1989, Namco released Disc NG, which is a series of compilations for the MSX. Volume 1 included XVM, 
which is a somewhat sequel to the first game. The game features power-ups for the player and also a boss at the end of each one. There are lots of different enemy types including standard airplanes to take out. The scrolling and the speed are absolutely horrible with choppy animation for all to see. This game should only be checked out by die-hard Xevious fans who just can't get enough. At the end of the first Far Draw Saga, there was a brief message telling us to be on the lookout for Episode 2, which was released on the PC Engine in 1990. Even though it shares the same name as the MSX2 version, this is a brand new game including an original mode which is a perfect port of the arcade original and one of the best conversions at the time. It also features a four-stage story mode that's even more difficult than the MSX2 version. The graphics are fantastic and really show off the PC Engine's capability. The music is nice and moody and fits in with the rest of the game perfectly. In 1991, Xevious made its return to the arcades with the game Sovalu. This was a Japanese-only exclusive which is a first-person on-rails 3D shoot-em-up similar to the game Starblade with polygon graphics. The gameplay is very similar to the original game in which you have an air zapper for destroying air-based enemies and also your bomb blaster for destroying everything on the ground. This time around you have a shield which will deplete with the more damage you take. Certain levels do end with a boss fight, typically with the Andor Genesis. It was also released for the Wii Virtual Console in Japan in 2009. The only way to play this game is on MAME unless you are living in Japan. nineteen ninety five saw the release of Xevious arrangement in the arcades it's hard to take a classic game and revamp it just enough so that it feels like a different game but not too different while still retaining everything that made it so great Namco did a fantastic job with this and they fixed a lot of the issues with the original Xevious the first welcome edition is a simultaneous two-player co-op mode which is very cool to utilize. The game now has a proper ending which takes place after the 16th stage. There is a small text box at the bottom of the screen telling you when you enter a new area. We get a few new enemy types and the backgrounds have been changed up just a bit. The music was given a significant boost as well, so instead of only having one tune that loops endlessly, we are given some fantastic merry melodies in the background. There are even three extra, much more difficult areas to play through if you can manage to complete the game without continuing. This is absolutely fantastic and it's a 100% must play if you are a fan of Xevious. A pixel-perfect emulated version was included in the Namco Museum Volume 2 compilation, which also included Mappy, Dragon Buster, Super Pac-Man, and more. Xevious 3DG was released first in the arcades in 1996 and then on the original PlayStation in 1997. This takes the 3D graphics found in Solvalu and switches the gameplay back to the classic vertical scrolling Xevious style. 
The game takes place across seven stages in which one or two players control their ship whose weapons include the standard air zapper and bomb blaster. It is possible to power up your ship with three different weapons including a double shot, super laser, and a heat seeking projectile that locks onto any enemy. At the end of each stage, there is also a boss that must be defeated including our old friend the Andor Genesis. There are secrets to unlock as well including different ships to play as. This is a lot of fun and it's a nice little update to the original arcade game. In 2006, the game was released for mobile phones in Japan. This is running under emulation so I'm not sure if the game ran any better on an actual phone. Namco Museum Essentials was released in 2009 exclusively for the PlayStation 3. This is a compilation of five classic Namco arcade games including the original Xevious. However, that is not the big attraction as this game features an exclusive Xevious sequel Xevious Resurrection. This retains the classic 2D gameplay but updates the visuals and sound. The gameplay is essentially the same as the original game although this time we do have a shield system to protect us from enemy fire. Thankfully the shields can be recharged. It also contains a simultaneous two-player co-op mode and you will need it because the game is pretty tough. Everything looks fantastic with some of the backgrounds approaching photorealism. The enemy ships and other objects are massive and extremely detailed. The scrolling is nice and smooth and it plays just as good as the original. Unfortunately, it has been delisted on the network. The game has been released, re-released, and re-re-re-released several times over the years in such places as the Wii Virtual Console, Xbox Live Network, PlayStation Network, the Arcade Archives, and more. In my opinion, Xevious is right up there with Galaga as one of the greatest retro shooters ever made. The game was released 40 years ago and it's another classic from the golden age of arcades that is just as enjoyable today as it was back then. I'll be doing a separate video for the conversions as I don't think people wanted to sit through a 60 minute video so be on the lookout for that coming soon. If you've never had a chance to try this classic shooter out and you love retro games you owe it to yourself to give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. I wanted to give a big shout out to Daniel from Slopes Game Room for providing some voiceover for this video. If you enjoyed this video be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon you could always use the donate button up above. Thanks everybody for watching.